In this video, I'm going to explain the character essay, and I'm going to give you four different ways to revise for them. In the last video, we looked at theme essays and how you go about writing those. And we said that for a theme essay, you need to identify the characters that link with that theme, as well as the events that link with the theme. Well, with a character essay, you can do the same thing, but this time, look at the themes that link with the character. So you just flip it around. So here are some examples of how you might link characters to themes. So if you were asked a question on Ralph in Lord of the Flies, you should, after your revision, be able to write an opening sentence for your essay that says something along the lines of the character of Ralph carries the themes of democracy, leadership and innocence. And then that's your little essay plan. So you know you're going to write a paragraph about Ralph and democracy, one about where he shows leadership, and another about where he shows innocence. Second one, Don John in Much Ado. You could write that Don John is central to the theme of trickery and deception in the play, as well as providing a contrast to the other characters in his dark outlook. So you would then have in your essay plan the idea that you're going to write about his trickery and deception, of which there are two or three moments you could write about. Um, and you've got another paragraph there that you could write about how he contrasts with the others. And then finally, Watson in The Sign of Four is a foil to the central character of Holmes and carries with him the themes of loyalty, friendship and, of course, romance, which conflicts with Holmes's scientific and logical approach. So there you've got three things you could write about to do with Watson and the themes he carries, and you've also got a couple of points that you could mention about his relationship with Holmes. A foil, by the way, is um, a word that we use for a character who is there to contrast another character, or perhaps to highlight things about their character, or in some cases, um, almost dampen them down a bit. So I see Watson as being like a foil to Holmes, because I see Watson almost like as a literal piece of tin foil. So he sort of wraps up Holmes in a way and protects other people from Holmes's um, burns that he constantly gives out with his sharp tongue, even though he doesn't mean to. But that's how I see Watson. So that's how you could straight away come up with some essay plans for a character by purely linking to the themes that relate to that character. In order to be able to produce opening lines like that and essay plans like that, you need to do your revision. And here are four ways that you can uh, investigate in order to do your own literature revision. Now, the first way you should have come across at some point in school is the four M's or M mm, as we call it. So in the four M's, what you have to do is you split your paper into four. In the middle, you put the character's name and then you need to identify four things. Firstly, mannerisms by which we mean what they do now this doesn't mean specifically um, things that they do in terms of plot it means physically things that they do or the way they react to others so for example um, piggy in the lord of the flies will often polish his glasses that's significant because it's symbolic um, jack in lord of the flies often flushes he goes red that's significant as well. So it's more about things that they do as a person, things that you would recognise as being, oh, that's the sort of thing such and such would do. Mutterings is obviously things that they say, so this is where you can put some key quotes for that character. Motivations, this is where you need to identify why that character might be the way they are, um, and also what it is that they want from life or their journey in this particular text so what gets that character out of bed in the morning and then finally milestones so this is where you will pick out the most important moments in that character's story so which are the um, the main events in their overall tale the second way that you can revise for characters in literature is by doing character trees so you again you should have done these at some point in your school career in English but in case you haven't if you think about a tree there are various parts that make up the tree and if you think about them metaphorically you can use the tree to represent 
a character. So firstly, all trees have roots. Um, otherwise, there would be no tree. So they all grow from roots. And there are two ways you can look at this to help you understand a character. First of all, what those roots represent is the background to that character. They represent their birth, their childhood, the environment they grew up in, the soil in which they were planted and, and grew. So if you look at it metaphorically in that way, a character like Oliver Twist, for example, because of his background, because of the soil in which he grew, his tree, his metaphorical tree, his character would be very different than the tree of somebody like Benedict in Much Ado About Nothing. Equally, the tree um, that Piggy becomes, the, the soil he grew up in and the environment, the background that he grew up in is very different from that of the other boys on the island. So often that can have a big influence on the character. Now, the second way you can use the roots is if you take yourself out of the text now. So rather than pretending that these characters are real and looking at them as real entities, look at them as constructs and look at the context, the background in which they are placed. In other words, Beatrice, Hero, Benedict, Claudio, we're talking about characters that were written in the Elizabethan period. So somebody like Beatrice, this is where you can talk about the fact that she is almost like a Renaissance woman. Um, if you look at contextually when Holmes and Watson were created and written, the background in which they were created has an influence on how they are as people in the text itself. So trees also have leaves and the leaves metaphorically represent the outward appearance of that character. And by outward appearance, we mean the face that they put on in public. So if somebody else was to be asked about that character, this is what they would largely say about them on first impressions, the sort of person that they seem to be, the image that they put across. So again, for somebody like Beatrice or Benedict in Much Ado, the outward appearance is that they are quite independent, that they are witty, um, that they don't like the opposite sex, and that's the outward appearance. And often that can give you a really nice contrast with the inner core of that person. So it's important to identify the outward appearance of characters. The next thing that we need to look at are the branches of the tree. So these represent the events that have happened in the life of this character. So as that tree has grown, new branches, new boughs have grown outwards. Um, they will all affect the shape of the tree. As we know, big events in our lives affect our characters, affect our personalities. So it's important that you can recognise those big moments in the lives of characters that you read about because they will also give you key things to write about in an essay. Now, the final part of the tree metaphor that we need to look at is the trunk itself and the trunk represents the inner reality of that person. This is the core personality that we might not see on the outside. You can see that there is one, but you can't necessarily see what that person really is. Now, what's interesting is in literature, often the only time that we get to see um, a person's true self is when something happens that reveals that inner core. And if you think about a tree, metaphorically, the only time really you're going to see the inside of a trunk is if it's either chopped down or there's some kind of um, accident that means some of it falls over or if you physically make a hole in it. So metaphorically, you can see the trunk of the tree as being the core part of that character, the private face of that character that's only seen at certain moments in their story. And often identifying those moments where we see the truth of that character is going to be key in writing a really good essay on that particular person. The third method of revising for a literature essay on a character is by producing some character arcs. So these are really good for structuring an essay on a particular character because what they do is they take you through um, in the very shape of the arc 
um, the process of looking at the beginning of that character's story, moving on to the middle, and then looking at the end. And the point is that you need to be able to, through your revision, pick out three moments, minimum, but preferably five, moments that sum up that character's journey. So how do they start off? How do they appear? What sort of person are they? What happens to them? Then what happens in their uh, lives in terms of plot development? Then what happens next? Then what happens? And then where do we end up? And that in itself, like a potted history of that character, that in itself should help you to write a very strong essay on a particular character in a play or a novel. Okay, the fourth and final method that we're going to look at today for literature revision of character is three, is the magic number. This is the final stage because if you've done your revision really well, anybody should be able to give you any name of any character in a text that you've studied and you should be able to do the following. You should be able to write down three words that sum up that character, three themes that they link to, three quotes for what they've said, and three moments that are significant for that character. If you've revised carefully, this is the ultimate test of your knowledge, your new knowledge and of your revision and how effective it's been. So you should be able to do all of those things for that character. And if you can, then you should be confident and happy that you could write a really good essay on that particular person. So let's look at some examples of how your revision might manifest itself, might turn into a really good opening to an essay. So the question for a character essay will be the same as a theme one, but rather than saying, how does the writer present the theme of, it will say, how does the writer present the character of? So for example, how does Shakespeare present the character of Macbeth here? How does Golding present the character of Jack? So top two, here's an example of what you can do if you've done your revision with the four M's. So you could begin straight away with a really strong statement about that character's motivation. So you could begin your essay with, the character of Macbeth is presented as being motivated by power. Piggy is shown to be motivated by approval from others. And then what would follow in those essays are two or three moments when this is shown to be true. You might also offer a moment when it's shown not to be true, just to show a different side of that character. The next two, these are examples of your uh, three is the magic number revision. So let's say you wanted to start your essay off with a description of the different facets, the different sides to that character. So you might say Macbeth is presented as an ambitious, fickle and violent man. Three words. Jack is presented as an ambitious, violent and arrogant boy. Three words. Two very similar to Macbeth. Final one. This is where you will see how you might use your character tree revision to write your opening sentence or the character arc. In fact, this one kind of doubles up both. So here we say Beatrice is shown at first. There's your character arc. Beatrice is shown at first to have a hard exterior and a sharp tongue. But over the course of the play, character arc, we see her inner vulnerability and her immense capacity for love. So here's where we're going to the character tree, because over the course of the play, we get to see what's really inside there. And as we said earlier, the moment we get to see it is when she's damaged. That's when we see what's really inside there. So hopefully um, this helps. You've got four different methods by which you can revise your characters for literature. There's a little indication here as to how you might start an essay off in three different ways. Um, do spend some time working through the different methods in this video. Some might suit you better than others. Thank you for watching.